if, if we really think about it and, and I reflect upon where the Lord brought us from, I think we got enough to rejoice about. Yeah, I, I think that, 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 that ought to be it, but, uh, uh, but, but, but it, look, it looks like to me uh, that, that uh, we can see some of the same signs today in the life of the church that the Apostle Paul saw then. We could see the downturn of the human spirit and the shift in attitude and disposition that exist among longtime people of God. So, so maybe we ought to join the apostle at extending this Christian call to rejoice. Why should we rejoice in the Lord always? Why should we maintain a consistent attitude of joyfulness? Well, I'll, I'll suggest several things. First of them is this. We should rejoice in the Lord always because joyfulness is an expression of our gratitude to God. You know, when we're joyful, we're thankful. You know, when we are, when we are joyful, we are saying, Lord, I Thank you, Lord, I praise you, Lord, I lift you up. You know, when we are uh, uh, joyful, we are also thankful. So, so why should I uh, and why should you uh, rejoice in the Lord? We should do so because we're grateful. You see, you see if, 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 there's, if there's any grateful people in here today, you know, it means that you should be uh, rejoicing in the Lord because I'm thankful. You know, when uh, 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 the apostle uh, expressed these words, he was well aware of the fact that the Lord had worked miracles in the lives of many of the people to whom he was speaking. Yeah, he, he, was, he was no novice to this thing. You know, he was not an outsider. He was well aware of the lives, the daily lives, the intricate details of the daily lives of the people to whom he was speaking. He wasn't talking to strangers that he knew nothing about. He was talking to folk who he knew had been healed. People that he was aware of the fact that they had been delivered and set free. People who had come a long way from where they started. Somebody ought to hear me preaching in here today. Thus, he could call them back to the Christian responsibility to rejoice in the Lord. You ought to be grateful. That's what he was saying to them. You ought to be thankful enough to rejoice in the Lord, to let your joy be known. Because the Lord has done some great things in your life. Look at where the Lord has brought you from. Rejoice in the Lord. Anybody in here listening to me? Because you too can just think about where the Lord has brought you from. Think about what the Lord has done in your life. Think about doors he has opened for you and ways he has made for you. Think about the healings he has brought upon your life. Yeah, that's why... We rejoice in the Lord always because we're grateful. It's an expression of our gratitude to God. We rejoice in the Lord 
always because the Lord is always good. Lord hasn't given up on us. We ought not give up on God. The Lord is consistently good to us. We ought to be consistently grateful. And it ought to be expressed through our joyfulness. Yeah, but another, another, another reason we, we ought to be consistently uh, rejoicing in the Lord, and that's, and that's this, is because our joyfulness transcends external conditions. Yeah, joyfulness transcends external conditions. You know, see, this, the, the, the apostle uh, uh, was, was also very uh, aware of the fact that the people that he was calling to rejoice were not experiencing the best of days every day. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, the, the uh, but I'm saying this to you just in case somebody would say, uh, Paul, that's insensitive of you to say to people rejoice in the Lord always when you know. They are carrying heavy burdens. When you know that this one and that one just got a bad report from their doctor. Paul, it would be insensitive of you to call upon these folk to rejoice in the Lord always when they are just coming back from the cemetery. Burying somebody that they've loved. When they, when they just lost their job or, 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 or when, when they are, 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 are headed to divorce court. You see, but, but, but the apostle said, the apostle would respond by saying, look, no, I'm not insensitive to what people are going through. He says, in fact, I got a few burdens I'm carrying myself. Said all of us are dealing with something. All of us are struggling with something. But joyfulness, the apostle says, transcends our external conditions. See, what, what, the, what the apostle uh, was really saying is that we ought not allow what happens outside of us to determine how we are going to respond inside. You know, say, they say yeah, you know, though uh, uh, life, life happens. We have ups and downs. We, 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 we have trials and Tribulations, as sure as you born, you're going to have some difficulties in life. And the apostle is well aware of that and have had his share. But here's what he says. I got to keep on rejoicing anyhow. I got to keep on rejoicing regardless of my circumstances. I must rejoice in the Lord always. Somebody need to hear me today. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. You know, the, the thing is that, that some of this stuff that we, that we are going through, the only way we're going to get through it is rejoice. We, we, we got we to gotta rejoice our way through some of this mess. You know, we, we in a world with all kind of things happening. Every time we turn on the news, something else. Time we look around, racism raising its ugly head. Sexism all over the place. Homophobia everywhere. All of these 
isms and, and phobias all around us. Every time we look up, if it ain't a, if it ain't a school being shot up, it's a shopping mall. Uh, or if, if it ain't that, it's a, it's a grocery store. If it, if it ain't that, it's something else that have black and brown bodies littering our streets like human trash. But listen to the apostle. He said, I know what you're dealing with. Know you got some issues and challenges. Know you got some burdens and all of the rest. He said, but rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord despite your circumstances. Maybe I'm talking to somebody that's listening to me right now. I'm telling you to rejoice in the Lord despite what may be happening in your life right now. Rejoice in the Lord. That's what, that's what, that's what the apostle is saying. He's saying because joy, <laughs> you know, joy is of quality. You know, happiness, you know, depends upon external circumstances. You know, in order for us to be happy, you know, things got to be working out all right for us. You know, things go wrong, you know, then, uh, you know, happiness is, is out. But, you know, see, see, the apostle was looking beyond that. He said, he said now look, he said, now, I know you're going through some things, but, but, but don't let go of your joy. So I know you, you might not be the happiest person, but, but, but don't let go of your joy. Because he understood, you know, if you get sick, one of the first things to go is your joy. You get broke, yeah, one of the first things out the door is your joy. Yeah, your, your, your relationship break up. Yeah, along with that goes your joy. But, uh, but he's saying, look, despite whatever may happen to you, keep your joy. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep your joy. Rejoice. In the Lord always. And then he puts double emphasis on it. And again I say. Rejoice. Can you handle that? Can you handle that? Can you handle that? Can you, can you rejoice regardless? What's going on? Uh, one, of, one of my dearest friends uh, who's going to heaven now. Uh, one of the greatest uh, musicians that ever lived, uh, in my opinion, and that's uh, the late uh, Thomas Whitfield wrote a song some years ago called Hallelujah Anyhow. Yeah, you know, I mean, can you, I mean, just swallow that, you know, Hallelujah Anyhow. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got some tough stuff to deal with, but Hallelujah Anyhow. You know, because cause when, I, when, I, when, I, when I look at what I'm dealing with, it make me look back at what I was dealing with last year this time. And, uh, and the fact that I'm on the other side of what I went through then, it lets me know that God is able So I just say hallelujah anyhow. I just rejoice in the Lord anyhow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, where you, where you just said thank you, Jesus. Anyhow, burdens are heavy, but you just said thank you, Jesus. Anyhow, your way is dark, but you just said thank you, Jesus. Anyhow, load is pressing down upon you. But you just rejoice in the Lord always. Just rejoice in the Lord always. That, that's what the apostle was trying to get over to the people of God. So you got to keep the spirit of rejoicing. You, you, you got you to gotta shout so much <laughs> that you just keep on shouting right, right through whatever may come your way. Because joyfulness yeah, joyfulness transcends our external 
circumstances. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? Because, because look at you now. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah. Some of us, some of us thought we wouldn't be here, but uh, but God did it. God did it. Look at us. Look at it. Look at where the Lord have brought us from. Look at what God has done in our in our life. But then finally, we ought to rejoice in the Lord according to the apostle always because joyfulness is contagious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we ought to rejoice in the Lord always because, because our joyfulness passes from one person to the next person. And then on to the next. And to the next. You know, if, if we mess around and rejoice in the Lord like we should, like we are called of God to rejoice, we'll mess around and make our family a family of joy. <laughs> 